India is a place littered with incredible ancient yet unexplained ruins. Intricate ancient carvings can be found dotting the cliff faces. Seemingly laser-cut caves hewn from enormous rocks, and perhaps the most impressive of its collection, the rock temples hewn straight from bedrock which can be found all over the country. We recently focused our attention on one of these sites in particular, perhaps the most impressive of these ancient temples. Known as Kailash, it is a structure drenched in sculpted animals and religious idols. Many others also exist, somehow carved straight out of stone hillsides. The accuracy in which these structures were carved, the refined finish achieved, has allowed these structures to evade explanation to this day. There is, in fact, another site within India, another temple, that, just like Kailash, was somehow hewn from a solid hillside. However, what is particularly interesting regarding this temple is that it was mysteriously abandoned, leaving the apparent different stages of its construction for all to see. Known as Vetuvan Coil, it is located within Kalagumalai, a panchayat town in the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Intriguingly, upon the structure and the carved walls, which it is now framed by, is the same telltale chisel marks found at so many other sites around the world, an anomaly we have already covered in depth. However, what is particularly interesting regarding Vetivan Coil is the fact that these crude marks are also accompanied by the seemingly impossible perfect Finnish sculptures, which mystify all who peer at them to this day. It is a visual, chronological timeline cast in stone, possibly left by an as yet unknown people, using unexplained yet amazing artistic skills. The temple seemingly displays the methods used to carve it. The artist responsible crudely chiseled the design, presumably somehow from the mind's eye, then somehow professionally worked into the refined, astonishing art, which adorns so many of these ancient Indian structures. Who built Vetuvan Coil? How did they achieve such perfection, with such hard stones, at such an early time in history? Is it, like academia would have you believe, a mere 1400 years old? Or is it a far more ancient structure, built using as yet unknown stone working techniques, used by an unknown group of artists? As research mounts surrounding such sites, the answers will inevitably be discovered. India possesses an enormous array of incredible ancient architectural accomplishments mind-boggling feats of ancient engineering, many of which continue to mystify modern explorers and elude modern understandings. Exquisite details displaying prodigious artistic abilities and accuracy. Ancient stone carvings, which seem all but impossible, yet here they are for all to see. We have in the past explored many of these sites. We have explored the similarities in tool marks found at other sites all over the world. The now lost methods which were utilized to once carve entire temples from a single block of bedrock. We have also investigated the many temples constructed from quarried stones, temples which possess columns seemingly created on lathes, yet many of these pieces weigh in excess of six tons. Just how these feats were accomplished remains a complete mystery. And our next architectural anonymy is of no exception. According to mainstream academics, Virabhadra Temple was built by the brothers Varana and Varupana, which were governors under the Vijayaranga Empire during the reign of King Achutaraya within the 16th century. Located in the village of Lepakshi, a significant place in the great Indian epic Ramayana, legend has it that the bird Jatayu, wounded by the king of Lanka, fell here after a futile battle against the king. When Rama reached the spot, he saw the bird and said compassionately to him, La Pashki, meaning Arise Bird in Telugu. Although the temple is claimed as the work of said brothers, 
just like that of many other incredible, inexplicable sights throughout the world. Any explanation as to how they achieved this incredible feat remains elusive. Additionally, there is one feature in particular which not only remains unexplained, but its past purpose, or perhaps more importantly, how this feature was successfully created remains unknown. Known as the Hanging Pillar of Lepachki, it is a column which initially appears to be a weight-bearing structure. However, on closer inspection, one discovers that this column is in fact set aloft, with its significant weight somehow being dispersed along the temple's roof. It is as if the builder of said temple created the column as a statement, a display of their incredible abilities and architectural skills. The column seemingly serves no function other than to display the capabilities of the temple's builder. It is as if they were simply showing off. Furthermore, along with a past purpose remaining elusive, just how the temple's inner structure actually supports the weight of the column is also an unknown. How can one be expected to believe that a temple such as this, located among many of India's other astonishing ruins, one which possesses clear displays of complex, advanced, and in-depth understandings of load-bearing architecture, along with the majority of its existence currently unexplained, was supposedly built by one of our well-studied ancestors a mere 500 years ago. How can one accept this as a logical explanation for its origins? The Hanging Pillar of Lepashki is clearly an incredible work of ancient engineering one that, although claimed as the work of known ancestors, remains largely unexplained. It is a temple which we find highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India, a temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people, a remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study? Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides. They could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which literally boggles the mind the only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements, perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish, evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older, and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple? Also, another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone. Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, 
caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. The 16th century Kerala's temple located within India used to be the royal chapel of Travancore's former rulers. It shot to fame five years ago when one of its six vaults, later coded as A, was opened, unearthing tons of gold coins, jewelry and diamonds worth hundreds of millions of dollars. An expert panel, inventorying assets at Kerala's famous Sri Padmanabhaswami temple, has approached the Supreme Court for permission to open an as yet untouched vault, a vault containing unimaginable fortunes, a face-off between the judiciary and religious authorities. The temple, situated in the heart of India, is billed as the country's richest and is one of several Hindu shrines that hold enormous amounts of gold and precious gems. The wealth was accumulated by way of holy offering from devotees over many years. The temple contains six chambers buried deep under its sanctum sanctorum. Two of them are open during daily rituals and two more every six months. The remaining two, A and B, are secret vaults. Sources close to the temple said antique coins found in the chambers alone weighed more than 600 kilograms. Around 200,000 items were documented, 600 of which were embedded with precious gems. One single locket alone was believed to contain 997 gems. Besides jewels, precious stones, necklaces, golden crowns and pots were also included in the list of inventory sources said. According to the India Times, an audit conducted into the assets shows that a massive amount of gold has mysteriously disappeared. Up to 769 gold pots and silver bars have been reported missing, some suggesting that there are hidden tunnels beneath the chamber which allowed the architects to lock the chamber doors from within, making it impossible to breach. This secret tunnel seems to have led to many years of plundering the treasure trove without anyone noticing. However, what has not been publicly acknowledged by the Indian court is the existence of the hidden inner chamber beyond Vault B. Reported as having thick walls made from solid gold, and it is where the real treasure is said to be located. Dwarfing what has been recovered so far, it could quite possibly contain the largest undiscovered treasure in the history of the world. Not only is the temple covered in gold, it seems it is also stuffed full of the stuff also. An expert panel from the Center for Earth Science Studies has also quashed rumors that the B Vault has an underground tunnel connected to the Arabian Sea. The team led by Dr. Ajakumar Verma detected small cavities and drains around cellars that they found insignificant. Chamber B is not part of the temple's official treasury. The holy chamber houses idols of gods and many other valuables meant to enhance the potency of the principal deity. Also found was a pure golden throne adorned with hundreds of diamonds and fully precious stones, meant for the seating of a past giant that has been estimated around 18 feet in height. In addition, many other large, sometimes giant and very old solid gold crowns were found, all studded with diamonds and other precious stones. The valuables are believed to have been accumulated in the temple's vaults over several thousand years having been donated to the gods by various dynasties and kings. We will keep you posted on what they find in Vault B. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain, which rests within modern-day Tibet. We touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid, which according to such legends, is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which according to said legends will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids, and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings which was, many thousands of years ago, 
carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock, resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision, adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, is nowhere to be found. And as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape, giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling.